number one quality of masculinity is to feel successful. That's what we want. And you know, you can just have a guy watching a football game and if his team wins, his testosterone is off the chart. Sex is going to be great that night. <laughs> if the team loses, it's going to go down. Uh, it's success because he's identifying with his team. But the, the idea here is that the more successful a man feels, the more he will bond with her. And it's her responsiveness to him that is what makes him feel successful. And so the responsiveness would be, there's so many little things you can do. You know, women, just as you know, the little things a man could do, like affection and compliments and planning things and being interested and asking questions of you. Those are little things that a man can do that make a woman feel special and important, you know, uh, complimenting her and so forth. It, unfortunately, most men don't know those, those skills that the little things make a big difference, but I'm turning it around now. And most women don't know the little things that make a man bond with you. And it's these little messages, little messages again, that say he's successful. So what would that be? You know, here's three things you can practice to take away from today is one of them is a guy's talking and you ask him a question, he says something before you go into too much information, uh, you then always acknowledge him from the point of view of that makes sense. That's one magic phrase. You'll see a guy go, oh yeah, what did I say? <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, another one is, uh, oh, good idea. Oh, good idea. And, and you gotta put a little bit of that femininity in it, and which men can do for each other. Men are like starving for appreciation. Men are competing with other men all the time. Our whole lives is pecking order, competition, uh, getting ahead. And you know, if I open the door for another guy, he walks in and gets the job. You know, if I pass the ball to him, he gets the touchdown, he gets the glory. Uh, if, if, <laughs> if I compliment him, then, you know, somebody says, who did this? Well, my partner, Bob did this and Bob's going to go, yep, I worked really hard to accomplish this goal. And I just gave away the possibility of me getting the advance of the raise and the recognition of the opportunity. Whereas women don't understand this because women have a code. It's all different, different perspectives. Women have a code. If I say, if I'm a woman and I say, oh, Mary, Mary did this. She did such an amazing job. She stayed up late and she did this and she handled this and we could have never done it without her. Mary has to follow the rules and the rules are, but Jane, Jane, <laughs> you did this and this and this and you did this and this and this. And that's because women will bounce back and forth, but because inclusiveness uh, is an estrogen uh, quality. And estrogen is what lowers women's stress. So women have all kinds of values around inclusiveness. But men, estrogen doesn't lower our stress. It can actually raise our stress if it's too much. See, it's all interesting. No hormone is bad for you. It's just how much, when, and so forth. So estrogen is a good thing for men. If their testosterone is too high, boom. You know, it's just like, oh, I get to relax. I get to enjoy feeling love. When you feel love, your, your estrogen levels are going up and your oxytocin is being produced. If your testosterone is too high, it kind of lowers it down. And that's why what happens for women is, uh, you know, all these little ex expressions of affection, they're the big oxytocin stimulators that help lower stress for women because they lower their testosterone and their estrogen can go up higher to its normal level. Uh, to restore normal estrogen production. Now it's interesting, you can measure women's estrogen levels today and they could be too high. And I'm over here saying that estrogen lowers stress for women. And that's because we have something called artificial estrogen, which is in all the pesticides, uh, all the GMOs, uh, all the plastics. They have these uh, ingredients in them, chemicals in them, that when they get into your body, these are man-made chemicals, uh, that the body recognizes and thinks it's estrogen. So suddenly now you've got estrogen being, uh, uh, the, the brain going, oh, I've got plenty of estrogen. So then the body stops making its own estrogen. And it's, it's being in that mode of making estrogen that a woman gets this stress reduction. Otherwise, she doesn't uh, feel like she has to do those things to make estrogen. It's really, it's a little bit complicated understanding, but uh, the body thinks I've got plenty of estrogen, then it stops motivating her to do the things that would make the estrogen. So the body, woman's body knows that I need estrogen to feel good. Okay, what causes me to make estrogen? Loving people, appreciating people, uh, opening my heart to people, uh, being emotional, 
all these things that I need to go there to feel that. Well, suddenly, if you've got an outside source of estrogen, then you no longer feel motivated because you've already got it. It'd be like you know, if I'm hungry for food and I'm looking for food, 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 but then I get food, I'm satisfied for a while. I get the benefit of food, but I lose the motivation to get food. And all of our social behavior is based upon, on a biological level, certain motivations that will make us feel good. So women are not naturally motivated to be more loving, for example. Uh, that's what's happened to a lot of women who are in their 40s is they spend a lot of time in the world of testosterone. And that lowered their estrogen levels and testosterone raises stress for women. And they're being exposed to all of these xenoestrogens, there's called. And so they don't feel, they haven't felt in their younger years a stronger motivation to be in relationship. And when they get in relationships with guys, it's kind of like, you know, it doesn't do it for me. I'm not really that involved with him. That's one side of it. Then there's the other side of it where you can get very needy because you've been suppressing your feminine. So either sides, there's all this hormonal imbalance. Men have hormonal imbalance too. We, these xenoestrogens are keeping men's testosterone levels low. So we are hungry uh, for messages that say we're a success, more so than in previous generations. So this is where, you know, sometimes women hear what I say and they say, oh gosh, just sounds like men are on a big ego trip. I need to support their ego. And just hold this in balance. You know, we just, we're different. Men need more testosterone. So you acknowledge what they do, which often, looks like ego and that is ego but women have ego it just doesn't look that way because women are not so much like look at what i do it's look at who i am how i feel what i need you know she wants hugs she wants affection she wants romance she wants dates you know guys that don't understand women are thinking god women are so needy <laughs> uh you know so women men think the women are needy women think men are egotistical no women have are more aware of their needs that's a quality of estrogen and men are more aware of what they want and that's a quality of testosterone and what we want is to be accomplished to achieve to make a difference and that's called success if we simplify it so these three little takeaways good idea <clears throat> another one is that makes sense another one is you're right <laughs> You nod your head. You're right. That's true. That's true. And then give a point of view from your perspective. And if you disagree with him, you, you can always say, well, that makes sense. I also have a different point of view. And you say it. You don't have to submit your authenticity to a man, but you don't dump anything on him. And dump is what I mean by <clears throat> uh, complain to him. 